Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Auto. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today we're at the shop taking a look at this 2018. This is a Buick LaCrosse with a 2.5 liter Ecotech engine. Now, if you guys couldn't tell already, this one is a hybrid model. There's a special name the GM has for this hybrid system. I just can't remember it off the top of my head. Oh, it's called E-Assist. Now, basically the way that this E-Assist system works is that we have an alternator. It's located on the backside of the engine over here. It's really hard to get a good image of it, but if you guys take a look here, you can see this looks pretty much like a normal belt driven alternator. You can see we got a couple of coolant hoses connected to it. Well, that's because it has its own cooling system, but this alternator is not only a generator, it's also a motor. It can be used to actually drive the crankshaft of the engine by turning the serpentine belt. And what that allows for is for the computer to actually shut off the fuel to the engine and still drive the car by running it on that generator slash motor. So under normal conditions, when you're driving the car, the combustion engine is running, the generator is charging the hybrid battery pack that's in the trunk, and that's how the charging system is maintained. Now, when you're driving slow speeds or decelerating, the computer actually cuts fuel off to the engine and runs it solely on the hybrid battery. And when it's time to accelerate, the generator slash motor actually acts as a starter motor to restart the combustion engine, and this process goes back and forth. One other neat feature is that this electric motor can actually be used to add horsepower when needed during acceleration by assisting the combustion engine. This, of course, helps with fuel efficiency and makes the vehicle more eco-friendly, but it does make the vehicle much more complicated, especially when it comes to diagnosing the electronics. This actually brings me back to my point and the whole reason that we're actually here. I forgot to mention, the reason they called us out here is because the vehicle is not charging. Now, according to the mechanic, what they told me is that they actually replaced the alternator slash generator slash motor three different times. Now, granted, they did put used parts on this. The customer couldn't really afford a new alternator slash generator slash motor. So the ones that they put in the car had to come from the salvage yard. Anyway, even after replacing the generator motor, the charging system still wasn't working. And so not only did they replace the controller for the generator, but they also replaced the battery pack in the trunk. Let me take you over to the back seat. And as you can see, this is our battery pack. Just like any other battery pack on a hybrid system, it's made up of multiple cells that are all stacked in series in order to create a high voltage. And they also replaced the 12 volt battery that's here in the trunk. Which, by the way, this battery is actually completely dead, even though it's brand new. Now, like I mentioned before, all the parts that they put on this car actually came from the salvage yard. They're all used parts, so, you know, it's hard to trust any of it. Now, this big box that they replaced under the hood is what actually controls the generator slash motor, and it decides when to switch it from generator to motor. Of course, it uses several other inputs from the vehicle in order to determine when to do that. So if this thing's not charging, it could be a thousand different things on the vehicle. So I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and hook up a scan tool. We're going to check for codes. We're going to start up the engine and verify the concern. All right, so let's hop inside the car. So I've got the scan tool right here. I'm going to go ahead and crank it first. So let's put our foot on the brake and push the start button. That's not good. Okay, so it looks like we're not getting enough juice here. Try it one more time. Nope. Well, now it just died completely. Okay. All right, guys, so you can see they had a battery charger connected. The cables are running into the trunk over there and uh, looks like it cut off and I can tell why. They got some really sketchy extension cords going on here. And I don't think this is enough to charge our battery. I don't really know what's going on here. looks like they got this uh, little extension cord for a house you know this looks like something uh that goes to like your christmas lights i don't know this is just really shady so i'm just gonna disconnect all of this and we're just gonna connect the jump pack all right so i got this jump pack from the guys over at yesper this is the monster start x2 it's a high powered portable jump starter it's rated at 6,000 amps so that should be plenty to jump start this car so let's go ahead and connect our positive lead there's a positive terminal right here at the fuse box then we're going to connect the negative lead over here to the stud you don't really have to push any buttons and i can already hear the car just powered on so let's step inside now let's see if we can start this thing all right so the car started right up let me go ahead and connect our scan tool so today we're using the top don this is a phoenix smart let's go ahead and hit auto scan it's searching for the vin number there's our vehicle let's hit scan i'm gonna go ahead and run a full system scan you guys can see our voltage up here at the top we're getting pretty low we're somewhere around 10 9 volts 8 volts oh check that out you guys see our charging system is kicking in so now we're at about 15 well we just went from 15 down to 9 volts Ooh, what's going on here looks like it's switching on and off i'm not sure what's happening here but you can see that we're scanning all of the modules right now and our voltage is just going way up and falling back down it's almost like the charging system wants to kick on, but then it ends up turning off. Yeah, this does not look good. 
So we're done with our system scan. You can see we've got codes in pretty much all of the modules. But again, our voltage right now is down to nine and a half volts. So, you know, we can't really trust any of these codes because when you've got low battery voltage, you're going to get a lot of erroneous codes pop up. As you can see here in the ECM, we've got this uh, code P0AC4, hybrid powertrain control module requested mill illumination, and P1E00, hybrid powertrain control module 2 requested mill illumination. So, Basically, like I mentioned before, this vehicle has two hybrid modules. The main control module is the box under the hood up front, and the second control module is part of the battery pack that's behind the rear seat. Now at this rate, we're basically just draining our battery pack. Again, the engine is running at the moment, but the charging system is not working at all. Well, it seems like it wants to at times, but then it cuts off. So I'm just gonna shut this thing off in the meantime because we don't wanna kill our jump pack. All right, so I've got my graphing voltmeter connected to our positive and our negative lead over here. Hopefully we still got enough juice in this little jump pack. We were basically running the entire car on that one little jump pack for a while there. So let's go ahead and see if it'll start. Okay, so hopefully this thing cranks. Nice, it started right up. Now let's take a look at the graphing meter. You can see we're at 14 volts right now, but it kicks off. See, now we're down to 10 volts and then it kicks on and we're at 14 volts. Then it kicks back off, down to 10 volts. You guys see this? So charging system's kicking on, then it turns off. I can actually hear something clicking over here. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Is that my jump pack? Yeah, that's actually the jump pack that's clicking. Take a listen. You guys heard that? It just clicked on. And at the same time it clicked on, our voltage went up to 14 volts. Our voltage drops, you hear the click. And when the click hits, that's when our voltage jumps. So, okay, I see what's happening here. All right, guys, so it was at this point that I realized what was happening. The charging system on the vehicle wasn't actually working. This jump pack is designed to only give you a quick boost of voltage in order to start the vehicle. It does not maintain battery voltage. So when you have it connected to your battery, it's going to be continuously giving it short burst of 14 volts. So I think what I need to do right now is I need to disconnect this jump pack, but I don't think the car is gonna stay running very long because our voltage has dropped way down. Okay, so let's just move this out of the way. And yep, our engine just died. We might have to get a new battery for this thing because we can't even keep it running. All right, guys, so the shop went ahead and put another battery in it. They had one laying around. I mean, of course, it wasn't a new one. It was a used one. So I'm not exactly sure if it's fully charged or not. But again, we have our little jump starter disconnected. Let's go ahead and reconnect our meter. You can see our graph right now. We are at 12 volts. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Okay, let's see if this thing cranks. Uh, looks like we didn't have enough juice that time. Let's try it again. See if it'll crank. Come on, baby. Nope, there's not enough juice in that battery. Let's go ahead and reconnect our jump pack just to get the car started. So I'm going to hook this thing back up. Hopefully we got enough juice. Yep, we got the car started. Now let's go ahead and disconnect it. We're gonna set this aside, reconnect our meter, and let's take a look at the graph. Okay, so right now we're at about 11 and a half volts. As you can see, we have a straight line going across. Our power's not cutting in and out. We're basically just running off of the battery that's in the trunk. So yeah, this does confirm that our charging system is not working. Let me see if I can switch this over to something that's easier to see. Okay, so instead of the graphing meter, we're gonna do a digital multimeter. So this is just gonna give us a big number on the screen. And again, you can see our battery voltage right now with the engine running is only 11.4 volts. So this charging system is not charging at all. We're solely running off of the 12 volt battery that's in the trunk. And the longer that we keep this thing running, the more it's gonna drain that battery. So at this point, I'm gonna cut the engine off and I'm gonna turn the ignition on. Now, the way you do it is you hold this button for 10 seconds. And as you can see, the instrument cluster came on. Now we're gonna take our scan tool and let's run another full scan. Okay, so now that we're done with our scan, the first thing I wanna do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear all of these DTCs. Now, the reason I wanna clear these DTCs is because, again, our battery's been really low, so we're setting a bunch of erroneous codes, codes that get set just because the voltage is low. So my intention here is to clear out all of the erroneous codes, and I wanna see which ones are the hard faults. The hard faults are the ones that are gonna come back right away. Okay, so now that we're done clearing all of the codes, you can see the ones that stayed behind. First of all, we have one in the ECM. Let's go ahead and see what it is. Okay, so in the ECM, you can see we have this P1E00, hybrid powertrain control module two, requested mill illumination. 
I think basically what this code is telling us is that the hybrid powertrain control module number two has a fault code stored in it and it wants the check engine light on. So let's go over to the hybrid powertrain control module number two and see what it wants. Okay, so in the hybrid powertrain control module number two, we have this P0 AFA hybrid EV battery system low voltage. We can even go into this module and read the actual voltage. So let's go into the data stream. We're going to choose voltage data number one. I'm just going to go ahead and select all. Now here in the data pids, we're gonna look for battery pack voltage. Okay, here it is, hybrid EV battery pack voltage. And as you can see, we're actually at 84.7 volts. That's interesting because if I'm not mistaken, this battery pack should be rated at 86 volts. So according to this, our battery pack is actually pretty much full. Let's see if there's anything else here that we can take a look at. Okay, yeah, so this is interesting. Take a look here at hybrid EV battery interface control module number one voltage. We're showing zero volts here. Our ignition is on. We should be showing system voltage. And control module number two voltage is also at zero volts. Something here isn't right. Maybe that's what the code is referring to, the voltage in the control modules one and number two. Now in the hybrid EV battery pack that's in the back, inside what we have are actually two sections of battery packs. And each one of those two sections has its own module. That's what's referred to as the EV battery interface control module number one and control module number two. Seeing the modules at zero volts, but the battery pack voltage is at 84, something here is not matching up. I don't know, I need to get a little bit more information on that, but I think what I wanna do right now, before I go any further, I wanna see if any other codes get set when the engine is running. So let me go ahead and put the jump pack back on this thing so we can start it back up. Okay, so our jump pack is reconnected. Let's hope it's got enough juice to start this thing back up. All right, so we got the engine running again. Let's go ahead and remove the jump pack. Set it aside. I'm gonna let this thing run for about a minute or two. Now I shut the engine off and I'm gonna turn the ignition back on. Okay, so we got the ignition on, but the engine off. I'm gonna run another full scan. And we're gonna see if we have any other codes. Okay, so we're done running our full scan. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run a report. That way we can save this. Okay, so now that we have that saved, let's go ahead and check out what these codes are starting out in the ECM. So we got system voltage low. Of course, take a look at our battery voltage. That battery that we put in the trunk is already going dead. We're down to seven volts. Dang, it looks like our car actually is dying out here. That is not good. This car drains these batteries quick. So we got the same code here. We also have this other code for the chassis control module. Not really much help there. Just throwing a bunch of low voltage codes. Let's move back to the hybrid powertrain control module. And now we got more codes. So starting up here at the top, P262B control module power off timer performance. We also have a code for the cooling fan in the battery pack. We still have these low voltage codes and this one's new, lost communication with the hybrid EV battery interface control module one. Yeah, that's no surprise because we saw them at zero volts earlier and lost communication with one or more hybrid EV battery interface control modules. Okay, so those codes are the ones that I'm really worried about. It seems like we may have a problem inside of this battery pack. Now the inside of our hybrid battery pack is actually made up of two different sections and each section contains 12 individual batteries that are stacked in series. Here you can see section number one, which is gonna be cells one through 12. And down here we have section number two, which is gonna be cells 13 through 24. Now each section contains its own interface module. So for section one, we have battery interface control module number one. And for section number two, we have battery interface control module number two. These battery interface control modules monitor the voltage of each battery cell in their section. Now these battery interface control modules communicate directly to the main control module in the hybrid battery pack. And this main control module is called the hybrid EV powertrain control module number two. Not to be confused with the hybrid EV powertrain control module number one. That one is located in the big box that's under the hood. The hybrid EV powertrain control module number two is located in the battery pack that's behind the rear seat. Here you can see where the modules are located on the EV battery pack. Number 10 is going to be the main module or the hybrid EV powertrain control module number two. And right over here, the two smaller modules, these are gonna be the battery interface modules number one and number two. Now, all of these components are part of the hybrid EV battery pack, which was replaced on this vehicle. So I find it interesting that even though we can communicate with the hybrid EV powertrain control module number two, we cannot communicate with either one of the interface modules. And when we look at the data pids on the scan tool, they're showing zero volts. So in this case, if we do have some type of communication problem with either one of these modules, this is going to be something that's internal to this battery pack. All right guys, so I was actually talking to the mechanic over here and he mentioned something that I think is pretty interesting. Uh, so again, they replaced the battery pack, the control module in the back, and they also replaced the one up here under the hood. Again, 
this box over here and the box in the trunk they have computer modules in them so when you replace them they have to be programmed now he's telling me that they actually never had anyone come out and program them so i wonder if that's something that we should start with again this is the box up here that they replaced you can see it's got some markings on it from the salvage yard i did already check the service info and it's telling us that when you replace this module it does need to be programmed yeah so let me go ahead and grab my laptop we're gonna hook up sps2 and we'll see if we can get this thing programmed a few moments later all right guys so fast forward you can see i've got my jumper cables going over to my truck over there now this we're going to be using to maintain our battery voltage while we do our programming these are nice big thick cables i paid a lot of money for these but these are nice and long so they got a long reach and they're able to maintain the current that we need during the programming process now inside the car you can see i got my laptop over there i've got my pass-through device up here we're logged into SPS2, and I'm gonna start by programming this generator control module. This is the one that's also referred to as the hybrid powertrain control module number one. That's the box that's under the hood. Then after we're done with that, we're gonna continue with programming the hybrid powertrain control module number two. That's the one that's part of the battery pack that's located in the trunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin the programming process, and I'll update you when it's done. Okay, so we've completed programming both of the modules. I'm gonna remove the jumper cables. Let's reconnect our jump pack. Okay, so let's give it a shot and see if this thing cranks. Now let's disconnect it and let's reconnect the leads for our meter. And check it out, guys. We're charging at 14.5 volts. That is freaking awesome. If you guys don't believe me, I mean, take a look here. I don't have anything connected. My jumper leads are on the ground over there. The jump pack's right over there. We're charging solely from the generator on the car. It looks like our charging system is finally working. Let's reconnect the scan tool and see if we still have those codes. All right, guys, so as you can see, after running a code scan, we no longer have any codes in the hybrid powertrain control module one or two. That's a fix. Okay, guys, so I might've spoke a little too soon. I went ahead and I did a rescan. And if you take a look, you can see we still have the codes in the hybrid powertrain control module for the cooling fan circuit control and for no communication with the interface control modules. And if we go back into the live data, you can see that we still have zero volts on the interface control module number one and on the interface control module number two. Our hybrid battery pack is still showing 84.7 volts. So we definitely still have a problem. Even though the vehicle stays running now and it's charging, you can see we have a live view of the system voltage right up here. We're charging around 14 and a half volts. So the charging system is fixed. However, we still have a problem with the battery pack. All right, guys, so fast forward. It's been about a week now since I looked at the car. And unfortunately, the owner of the vehicle didn't want to continue with the diagnostic. Uh, once they saw that the car was running and the charging system was working and they were able to drive the car without it dying on them, they were pretty much ready to just take it home. And I can't really blame them because, you know, the car had been sitting for two months and they had already spent a whole lot of money to try to get it up and running. Maybe sometime in the future, they'll bring the car back so we can finish with the diagnostic. I pretty much kind of narrowed it down already to it being something inside of the hybrid battery pack. So hopefully sometime in the future, we can have some type of conclusion to this. But for now, I think that there's plenty of good information in this video, enough for me to want to share it with you guys. Now I want to take a moment to mention the real hero in this video, this Jesper jump starter. This one in particular is the Monster Start X2. It's a small portable jump starter rated at 6,000 amps and can be used on both 12 volt and 24 volt systems. This thing handled jump starting our Buick that was completely dead multiple times. Without hesitation, I can say that this is probably one of my favorite jump starters that I have. It's got these USB out ports so that you can charge up your electronics and this cool little light that you can use to light up your workspace. You can use it as emergency flashers and you can even use it to signal SOS. That's pretty much it, but that's kind of how I like it. No frills, lightweight, powerful, and reliable. So if you guys are looking to pick one up or you just want to check it out, I will leave a link in the description down below. You can also find a coupon code, save yourself some money. Anyway, like I always say, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found the video useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.